it's Noble Strength and welcome back to my channel. And today I am sharing with you one of my vintage purse collections. It's my John Romain purse collection. I recently added to this collection, so I just wanted to share with you the three that I have. And I wanted to give you some little tips and some information about the handbags in case you like these bags and you're interested in acquiring one yourself. Now, uh, how did I run across this bag? First, I knew nothing of the John Romain bag. I just happened to be at the flea market back in 2013, and this bag just caught my eye. Just the structure of the bag and the composition of it, and I was like, I've got to have that bag. And at the price of $10, I could not pass it up. So this was the first bag that I acquired this is the very first one and as you can see it's leather and it has a tweed um, covering here on the body of the bag it has brass detailing all along on the sides and in the front it has the feet on the bottom and it's a very structured bag it's very weighty and the leather is in excellent condition this bag I researched online soon after acquiring it and I could not find a lot of information about the history of the John Romain company but it is a bag that was considered a luxury bag back in the 60s and 70s and it was a really popular bag amongst the preppy I guess culture and so yeah it was the must-have it bag back then and the bag is like I say really good it stands the test of time this one is kind of like a doctor styles bag but it has a little slip compartment here and the John Robain bag comes with a deco and I'll show you more about that in the video but it does come with the deco there's usually the month and then the year inside of the bag along with the stamping of the John Romain name along with the logo now they do have a logo where there's a crest with a lion inside and then they have one where there's just a lion now the company was um, made a transition I think like in the 80s where their son uh, his son acquired the company Marco um, Romaine, but he changed the name just a little bit. He added an E on the end of the Romaine. So bags that were made like in the 80s, 90s, you're going to see an E on the end of the name. Now, like I said, this was the first one that I acquired. The second one that I added to the collection was this beauty right here. Now this is another doctor style, I say doctor style bag because of the way that it opens but it has the buckle detailing here again it is leather and it has the brass trim and the tweed covering here highly structured and very weighty so if you do not like heavy bags you probably do not want this particular bag because it is quite quite heavy with nothing in it so this one opens like this and it has a few more compartments. It has a snap pocket on this side and then a zip pocket on this side. And you just close it here, but I love that buckle detailing. This is what it looks like on the bottom. Considerable amount of more of leather. Now all of these bags, all I had to do was a little bit of conditioning on the handles with my uh, lotion leather lotion and then they were good as new I did do a little bit of polishing on the brass with my Brasso cleaner as well but there was no staining on the tweed so I did not add any moisture but I'm sure that if your bag has some staining you could gently clean it with a little bit of wool light and some a damp cloth or maybe a shout out and some damp a little damp cloth now the bag that I most recently acquired was this beautiful tweed bag and I've always wanted well I, I should say not tweed but a woven straw bag I've always wanted a straw John Romain bag but all the ones that I saw they had considerable amount of damage to the straw now all of my bags I have purchased in person I have not purchased any of them online I just happened upon uh, this one um, just last week at an antique store and the woman who ran that particular booth 
was happened to be there and I told her I was interested in the bag but it was a little bit pricey for me and she said well I'm willing to mark it down she says there are quite a few people who've been interested in this bag but they said they just couldn't afford it at the moment she said but I'm willing to mark it down for you so she did take off um, I think it was about $25 off the bag so I got it for $45 which is a mid price range. If you go online, you can get a, a nice, a fairly nice John Romain bag for $20, but every seller is different. So they range anywhere from 20 upwards to 150, depending on the bag. John Romain did make bags that were all leather. So some of those, there's like an all leather version of this bag. So those will be considerably higher in price which is understandable, especially if it's in excellent condition. Also, if you get a straw bag that's in excellent condition, meaning there's no tearing, no rips, uh, no varmin damage to it, it's gonna be considerably higher too. So I really did feel like I got an excellent deal on this bag for $45, it's in great condition. She said it used to be her mother's, and her mother passed away, she said, in 2012 or 13, and so she was just getting rid of some of the things that were taking up too much space. So I was happy to get it, so it's only been with one other person until now, and it's just like a picnic basket type bag. The inside is very open. It holds quite a lot. I just used it several days ago, and it held everything that I needed inside and it has the brass trimming, the turn handle, and it has feet on the bottom. And the thing with these bags, I like to buy them in person because you don't know how the bags were stored, you don't know what odors or smells are there. So if you're ordering online, ask a lot of questions and ask for a lot of pictures because People tend to store these type things when they're old in their attic or their basement. And we know that those are not environment, environmentally controlled spaces. They tend to be very hot or either moist. So a lot of damage can be done to the bag like mold and like I say, varmin bites all of the bag. So those are my bags. Now I'm gonna show you about the date code on the inside and what to look for. This is an example of what the date code looks like with the month and the year and another example of the month and the year and then this is what it looks like when it does not have a date code you'll see a lion and the john romaine name it's always a little added luck if you find one of these in your handbag it's the limited warranty card it shows you the style number inside of the bag it's just a nice little document to have to show that it's truly a vintage john romaine handbag well, there's another thing that I wanted to tell you about the John Romain bag. I recently went to a website where, where people can share their purchase of their John Romain bags. I'll try to find the link and leave it below, but there's a whole thread of people discussing their John Romain bag. So that's where I found a lot of the information about reading the date codes and things like that. Also, um, I noticed that one of the last comments in the thread was from uh, one of the owners of the original John Romain, which was Marco Romain, and he's the one that put in the thread that he was the son of John Romain and that the business closed, he said, in 1996. And so if you find one, you know, in really great condition, I would say go ahead and get it because you would have a really nice piece. And from what I understand, John Romain bags in really, really good condition are rare to find. So if you find one, hang on to it. They're good heirloom pieces to pass down if you have a daughter or someone who really likes collecting bags. So now I'm going to leave with you as we go out and depart some uh, pictures of how I styled my John Romain bags over the years. So some of these pictures are from 2013, uh, from when I first got my first John Romain bag. So I hope you have a great day and remember to be a good steward of all that God has given you because he truly loves us so much. And I'll see you next time. Bye.